Hi YouTube, it's Lena and I'm here today with the Graveyard Project Pan. Ooh, spooky. I should have put a Halloween decoration in the background even though it's like April. But this was started by Emily and Max. I will be linking her down below. You should definitely go check her out. The idea behind this project pan originally started as getting the products that are lingering that didn't quite finish in other project pans to throw them in here and get them finished in the six month time period. Although you can also put in, let's see, the lingering projects are called resurrection category. That, well, they are in the resurrection category. You also have the category of collecting cobwebs, webs, which is throwing in products that are you know, getting pretty old, might even be nearing their expiration date, just stuff you really want to move out or even just should move out of your collection. Now, she does do a playlist every year and this year I believe she's actually suggest requesting, not suggesting, that people fill out a quick, very quick little Google spreadsheet. It's literally just like your name and the link to where you are posting this if you are even posting this so that you know, she can keep up with everybody because this project is huge. It's, like this is a huge thing that goes on every year. They update, well we update, every two months because two months, especially if you're painting something like a blush or an eyeshadow or stuff that's a little harder to show progress on month to month, two months, you can usually, usually at least, get significant progress on a product by that point that, you know, you're showing something different. Or if you're weighing something, you might have significant weight change or anything of that variety. Now, I have, well, I have like, let's see, six, I have 10 products and you can put anything from like five to 10 in here, but it's technically seven categories of products. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now the first product, for the resurrection category, the stuff that I'm actually pulling in from different project pans, first I have this. This is the Skin & Co. Truffle Therapy Face Gommage. I tried to finish this in my, what's it called, 7 by Spring this year. Uh, this takes a lot more <laughs> time to finish than I thought. So it has my old marks on it, but the bottom mark is the latest mark on it, so I will try to rub off those marks later, but as you can see, month to month, I just don't use a lot of this. So hopefully by October I can have this finished. I really hope so. I don't love it, but it doesn't do anything bad to my skin, so I feel it's expensive. I got it in a box. I might as well use it up. And what I think is the only other actual resurrection product that I have is from not just that same project pan, but at least two project pans before it that I can remember. It might even be, no, it's three. It is three. <laughs> Let me correct that. So it is both from the, what's it called? <laughs> so I finished seven by spring. I'm sorry, I'm kind of brain dead today. I tried to pan it in my hashtag team project pan in 2020. I tried to pan it for 100 Colorful Empties one year, and it was in the Avengers Project Pan in 2018, so it will not die. It will not die. This is the Dior Lipstick and Rouge Zinnia, number 743. Now, it is at the end of its life, as you can see. Like, there's not a lot left. So I do have a paper mark on here, and hopefully in two months I can actually show proper progress, because especially if you saw me trying to pan it in my hashtag team project pan, even if I used it month to month, sometimes it did not show any visible progress. So this is the beast this project is made for. If I don't finish it by the end, I'm probably gonna throw it away in a fit of rage, even though I love the color, I got it as a gift. I am eternally grateful for my friend getting me this as a gift, but holy shit, I have been working on this lipstick forever. It's very pigmented. That's part of the reason why you just don't go through it very fast. I will say, I got her money's worth out of it. Now everything else is in collecting cobwebs because they are all older products. The first two things I grabbed are actually two face serums, but they're gonna be kind of serving different purposes. First is this Elemis Superfood Sika Calm Hydration Juice. This is one that at least last year I was mixing into the dry sheet mask that I have to kind of create my own 
you know, moisturizing sheet mask with these kind of like basic hydration serums that you get in boxes a lot, but I have oily skin, so it's not that these are bad for my skin in any way, it's just that they're not peak what I need in serum, so I don't necessarily put them into my regular skincare routine. So this one is starting right here. So it's about half done, but in using it in those sheet masks, these full, even these full sizes tend to go fairly quickly. I just got out of the habit of doing them this year. So maybe if I start throwing some of these extra serums that I have back into Project Pans, I'll start remembering to do that again, hopefully. And the other one I have that I haven't totally decided what I'm going to use it for yet, as far as either just in my skincare routine or as for sheet masks is the Pure Elise Prevent Blue Lotus Brightening Serum. And I say that because this is actually a really expensive serum, at least for me, it's $65, which is, it's a bit up there. I got it in an Ipsy Glam bag, plus I did not pay $65 for it, which, and the thing is, I do really like it. And even though it helps with anti-inflammatory issues, which I have a lot of redness in my skin, so this does help with that sort of thing. But at the same time, I'm panning a different serum and a different project pan, and it's like a slightly thicker, slightly more creamy one, but not like heavy in any way. And, and otherwise, I would use this like during the daytime, maybe, but I have vitamin C serums that I tend to use in the daytime, so I don't know. I'm gonna, let me, I'll probably decide once I finish the... 4th Ray Beauty Vitamin C Serum that I'm panning was like maybe I'll use this some days in the morning versus use the Vitamin C in other days so that I can get this used up in a way I would prefer to use it up. I don't know. Maybe I'm just babbling, but you, I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. Uh, next for uh, collecting cobwebs, last year I had this eyeshadow in this project pan. It's one of the L'Oreal Hit Pigment Duos. If these were around in like 2014, 2015 is when they got rid of them. So they're really, really old. And this is one isn't this set is in the shade Charmed. Last year I went to hit pan on this and I hit pan on it fairly quickly. But then I just decided to roll out, work on something else. Now, this year the purple shade is actually in 50 shades of purple. However, I am not working on this shade in anything as of yet. And I figure, you know what? In my pan that palette, I've used up all of the kind of like inner corner shades that I would use for that sort of purpose. So why don't I just start working on this shade for that? So I mean, now I will say one thing about these, these, these used to be well known for being like super pigmented. Well, mine are so old, they're starting to lose that pigmentation. So, but for an inner corner shade, as long as it's brightening, it doesn't have to be super pigmented necessarily, so that's not as much of a worry here as for say like this deeper purple shade where I want that pigment to show up. But instead of just hitting pan on it this year, I want to finish the whole thing. And I think I can do that in six months, especially since you know, you kind of have to build these shades up now because they're pretty old. So. Next, I mentioned this in my eye product makeup collection that I was gonna put this in here, and it is, here it is. It's the e.l.f. Under Eye Primer. I've had this forever. I don't even think they make this anymore. I had to weigh it because while there it, it, it's an airless pump, while there is a little hole in the bottom, it is actually not big enough for me to shove a paper clip through where I would usually be able to get a measurement on these. That's how I normally do it, but it's too small, so I can't do that. It weighs 19.4 grams. It only has 10 grams of product in it though, so. I don't know, and you, if you're just using it under your eyes, I don't know how much you're gonna be using it. Now, I've seen other people pan this just as a face primer, and that might end up happening if I get close to the end and I'm not showing a lot of progress just to kind of get it done, but we shall see. And finally, I have Zany Laney sprays. <laughs> no surprise there. I tend to put these in a lot of project pans because I have so many. I used to be, I used to be a rep for them back when they were still in business. This was a business that a friend of mine ran. Unfortunately, uh, they lost business due to COVID and they had to shut down last year. But I still have 
all of these sprays and they're getting older so I figured that they would really qualify for this and I figured rather than just put one in and roll in a different one every time I would just go ahead pick out four and we'd go from there. No. None of these have been used except for like maybe once. This one hasn't even been used once. It was one I bought when she went out of business. This is Lucille. It is based off of Negan from The Walking Dead. Like that was the idea behind it is that they made waxes and later body sprays based off of kind of pop culture references. And this one, the scent notes are leather, fire, and rain. And it has a little, they did their own artwork. It has a little picture of Negan that they made right there. This one is Seventh Sense. It is based off of Captain Marvel and the scent notes are leather, rose, and wine. I actually have two of these. This was the older artwork before they updated everything. This one is Don't Blow Away and it is almond macaroons and chocolate covered cherries. And I don't remember what this is based off of. I want to say it's based off of Gilmore Girls, but I could be wrong. But. This one is also like all the way up to here. This one was probably used once or twice. And finally, we have Gary's Vision, which is was a Halloween one they made that's based off of Adam's Family 2, specifically going by the little, you know, picture of them performing the little Thanksgiving play from their summer camp. And it is Mandarin Oranges, Muget, Lily, and Dill Pickle. And it's, this is probably the one that has the most progress because it is actually like, down to the paper. So I can typically finish about one of these a month but I have one going right now and I have one in my Fifty Shades of Purple that I want to start on before I get to these. So by the first update I might have one finished. But that's kind of why I went ahead and threw a bunch in here is so that I wouldn't necessarily finish it in a month and then be working on nothing for a month each time. So that is it. Like I said, I will be linking everything that I can down below. Check everything out. If you want to do this, like I said, go to the Google sign up sheet and sign up there so Emily knows you're doing it. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it and hopefully I will see you later. Bye.